Click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends, today we are going to study about different properties of refractories. In this session, we will study the 5 most important properties. So let's get started. The 5 most important properties of any refractory is, the first one is refractoriness. The second one is RUL, refractory under load. Third is porosity. Fourth is thermal expansion. And fifth is thermal conductivity. First property, refractoriness. Refractoriness is the ability of the refractory to withstand high temperatures. This is the most important property of the refractory. If this property is not there, any material cannot classify itself into consideration of a refractory. Now what do I mean when I say that it should withstand or hold on to a great amount of heat? That means that even at high temperatures, it should not show any sign of fusion. It should not melt. The melting point of the refractory should be much more than the melting point of the actual metal which is going to go through the extraction process and refining process inside the blast furnace. Because if the metal melts before that only the refractory melts then there is no point of putting the refractory or lining the interior walls of the blast furnace with that refractory. So it is very important for the industrialist or for the people who are going to refine the metal to find out the refractoriness of the refractory. If the refractoriness of the refractory is much higher, the melting point of the refractory is much higher than of the melting point of any metal or any temperatures which are going to happen inside the blast furnace or inside the crucible due to different reactions then that refractory would be perfect for it. The second most important property is known as RUL refractory under load. Refractory under load is nothing but a number which is 10% of the deformation of the refractories. That means it is just a temperature at which the refractory will get deformed by 10%. So we know that at this temperature the refractory will get deformed by a lot, approximately up to 10%. Then we know that we should always keep the temperature of the blast furnace below it. And our reactions and the entire process will take less than that. Then that refractory is completely suitable for that application. The third property is thermal expansion. When exposed to high temperatures, it will expand and once the temperatures go down or lower down, it will contract. So for refractory also, when the blast furnace, inside the blast furnace, when the temperatures are shooting high up during the combustion process or during the refining of the metal, the temperatures will shoot extremely high, which will lead to expansion of the refractory. And once the entire process is done, the temperatures will go low and that will lead to the contraction of the refractory. But if the expansion and the contraction of the refractories are very high, then the entire time the refractory will only do is expand and contract back. Due to this continuous expansion and contraction of the refractory, it will give something known as fatigue to the refractory. That means that all other properties of the refractory will start weakening. After some point of time, it will not withhold that amount of heat which it used to withhold before. It will not even withhold that amount of pressure which it used to hold before. So for the refractory to be suitable, it should have low thermal expansion as well as contraction. The fourth property of the refractory is thermal conductivity. Thermal conductivity is the property of any material by virtue of which the heat will flow through it. Now imagine we have a blast furnace, a refractory lined up inside it and it has a very good thermal conductivity. If it has a very good thermal conductivity, all the heat which is present in the blast furnace can easily flow through it and go out. Then what is the point of maintaining such temperatures inside the blast furnace? So for any refractory, one of the most important thing is it should have very less thermal conductivity or low thermal conductivity. That means that heat should not flow through it and even if it does, very small amount of heat should flow through the refractories. The last property of the refractory is the porosity. Now what do you mean by porosity? Porosity is the property of porous materials. For example, sponge. They have holes in it. Now if my refractory is made up of a material which has holes in it, it will start holding up things. Any acid, any gases, any type of liquid, slag which is being formed during the combustion and extraction of the metal, all those things will go and stick up to the refractories. If all those things go and start 
starts sticking up to the holes of the refractory, it will weaken the refractory. The properties of the refractory will alter. Why? Because the properties of the refractory will now be the properties of the refractory as well as all the other things which are in the holes sticking to the holes of it. Therefore, it is very important for my refractory material to not be porous. It should not at all be porous so that nothing can go and stick to it and the properties are intact. So in this video, we studied about different properties of refractory which are absolute essentials for a material to qualify as a refractory. Thank you so much for watching this video. Stay tuned to Ikeda and subscribe to Ikeda.